Like, is it a is it a three hour augmented reality game where you're like where you get to walk around and actually like destroy a virtual environment as a mech? Right. And it's the most realistic thing you've ever experienced. It might be worth that seventy dollars then. Probably not. We're also talking about video games. And this is me. So probably not. Right. A lot of the games we're paying seventy dollars for, they were seventy dollars now. I would say no. probably not, right? But it's just the idea of it has to be there has to be a value there of more than just it's X many hours. Right. Um, yeah, most definitely. Hello and welcome to level one hundred and eighteen of the Thoughts and Players Podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here with my compadre. David. What up? What up? How is it going this fine evening? Going. A little tired. How about yeah. you? Long day. A long day. Dragging a little bit. Trying to get uh trying to get some LaCroix in me to spark me up a little. This Monday I had to get my fillings redone. Um don't like it. Don't didn't didn't enjoy while it was happening. Haven't enjoyed it after it's happened. Uh, don't recommend. Do you have a question? Though? Yeah. Besides that, you know, just for your typical cleanings, do you like going to the dentist? I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Now, the last couple of times they had to numb me up. They were doing some real deep cleaning. I don't like that. It throws me off. It may, I, I've been feeling a little bit off ever since the last time I got a cleaning. And that was like over a week ago. Just felt a slightly off. And I think that the anesthesia, the numbing had something to do with it. When I got my fillings done, I said, no, thank you. None of the numbing stuff. I just want, they're like, hey, it was just a weird, a weird sensation. But if it's uncomfortable, just let us know and we'll, you know, we'll numb you up. I'm like, no, I'll just take it, whatever it is. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather take the pain than whatever that concoction you guys put into me does. So, yeah. What about you? Is, are, are you a no for the dentist? No, I, I love going to the dentist. You love going to yeah, the dentist. I, I, I don't like the x-rays when you have to put those things in your mouth because like, yeah. it's my gums, but oh, I mm. love good cleaning. Yeah. And like one of my uh, my wisdom tooth in my back left, top left, was uh -huh. abscessed and they had to numb me. So they put that needle in and then they like just pulled it right out. Like that was really cool. That was really cool, you say? Yeah. You're you you are you are an odd duck, my friend. Yeah, that's you're very true. Only person I've heard of that says I love going to the dentist. Yeah, everyone says I hate the dentist. And then you had to get your because they recommended to me that I get both my wisdom teeth pulled because they're so far back. And they're like, hey, oh, you wow. should get your you should get your wisdom teeth pulled. Yeah, I got, and I'm like, I don't. I got my other three surgically removed all at once, two days after my son was born. Not oh, the best wow. idea. Not the best idea. But you know what? You're trying to do it in the spirit. You're like, hey, I've got my son. He ain't got no teeth. You know, Papa gonna Papa gonna join the club for a little bit. You know what I'm you saying? I'll take it. Yeah. I'm gonna reduce That's some exactly teeth counts. We're gonna be together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, no, it's very I'll, nice. I'll it's very nice. Even of you. the playing field a little bit. Exactly. That was very kind of you. Very empathetic. Uh ladies, gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens. We welcome you in. Welcome you all into this level of the pod. Uh, we're going to talk games, of course, not just our teeth, though. I, I'm assuming we would love to. David loves the dentist. That's breaking news. It's 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 a very interesting fact. Another interesting fact about our David. Um, I love the break news, not teeth. There you go. See, he's got the jokes. Too. He's got the wit. Yeah, uh, bloody. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got a couple of really cool, interesting topics for today. But of course, before we get into our topics, we want to talk about the games that we've been playing. So. I can start off, or Dave, if you want to take it. Sure. All right. What you got? Um, so let's see here. I mentioned before beating, ending Rome expeditions. So that's been in the mm -hmm. that's been in the that's been in the the rear view. I have been playing pretty steadily Mafia Three, progressing my way through the story, trying to get to the end of it. Like I said, I feel like the story there's enough there to see me through to the end. So I've been playing some Mafia Three. And I've been meaning to play some big ambitions, but week stuff has been kind of full. Haven't been able to get into it. So I haven't done that yet, but I've been, as far as console games, I've been playing mafia three. Now I did drop back into bad habits. I did 
I, you know, took a little took a little snort off the line here in regards to some mobile gaming. I did I did backslide a little. Okay, um, I did not backslide into Eat Venture, though. That's, that's I, what I was thinking. Though I now wish I had, because instead I was playing a game called what was it called? Something, something. I can look it up really quick because my phone is right here. Um, Battle Z, which is a idle battler if you think yeah, of something I think I saw an ad for that yeah it was i saw it in an ad and i was like okay i want to go ahead and play this um so i was playing that it's useless don't play it they didn't there's bugs when you get to a certain point in the game and you can't you can't you unlock another mechanic like another element of the game you're supposed to be able to use and it doesn't unlock because the game's bugged <laughs> so you can't even really progress in the game. So I, I would wow. recommend not doing that at all. While I was playing Battle Z, I got an ad for a game called Walker's Attack, which is a game where you're walking around shooting zombie like, and they're you know they're they're color coded with like blue and green, and they're all different components that you use to access different levels or different parts of a level. So I played that. Would not recommend that. I'd recommend that over Battle Z. And then while I was playing that, I got an ad for Whiteout Survival. So I downloaded and played that. I okay. played that one for a minute. Yeah, I played that for a hot minute. And then I was like, I'd rather yeah. just play Manor Lords. This is I'd rather just play something that's a bit more accessible and, and deeper. Um, but yeah, but it was the it was the I got a trifecta there. OK, this is how I know that as I get older, I'm getting dumber because I played a mobile game and I saw an ad for a mobile game. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, that looks fun. And I download that one. And then I'm playing that mobile game. And then I got to add for another one. And I'm like, oh, that looks fun too. And I download that one. Uh, and now I regret yeah. playing all of them. <laughs> I, uh, I saw an ad for the Royal Match one uh, a few times. You know, oh, yeah. and I was like, you know what? Fine, I'll download it. Yeah, well, you can't. And I completed it. You got to play Royal Match. I, I... I'm not playing that anymore because I beat all 9,401 levels. There you go. There you go. Let's see again. Royal match. You got to, I think everybody's played that. It's, I think, Royal, I think some sort it's a yeah. candy crush copycat. Exactly. You know? I think Royal match is like the new candy crush in regards to everyone's played it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know I've played it. I didn't get too far in it, but I did get far enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, those these are the games that I played. There, it's whatever. You know, two of them were zombie themed, and so it's like you know, it's whatever. Uh, I don't. Right. Again, I'd much rather if instead of playing all those three, except for Whiteout Survival was a little cool. I rather have played, um, rather just played Eat Venture. I think part of me got into Whiteout Survival is because I had a little bit of hype for Frostpunk Two. It mm -hmm. was coming up. Frostpunk Two is now out, and I have not played it yet. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, so, so, um, but I think it was maybe a little bit of that, like, oh yeah, I, this is this would get me to Frostpunk too, um, and of course it didn't because I haven't played it. It didn't matter. None of it mattered. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been playing. It's mostly Mafia Three, and I got distracted by a few mobile games along the way. It happens, man. Yeah. How about uh, you? Uh, I've been playing a lot of TFT. They brought back. It's called. I forget what it's called, but. They brought back season 5.5, and so that's like a a game mode you can play. So it has all those characters and everything. Mm -hmm. So I've been playing a lot of that because it's only here for a limited time, you know. And then, of course, I've been playing Apex in the finals. Uh, I haven't gotten back into Scar of Maid or Maid of Scar or whatever that horror game is yet. I plan on to. I, I see it. I'm tempted. Just not in the mood to be scared yet. Yeah. But it's, I know it's coming. But uh, Pokemon Go, uh, not Royal Match. And not that's, Roman. that's, mm. that's about it. Oh, uh, a lot of Sudoku. I've been playing that again. Ah, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I have a, a bunch of different apps. So when the uh, pandemic happened, mm -hmm. you know, everyone just, all this free time i was on youtube and i found this channel cracking the cryptic and it's these two uh british dudes 
and they just solve these Sudoku puzzles. And it's crazy. They all have these like these rules and stipulations. And like I could never do the ones that they do on the channel, but mm-hmm. they had their own apps. So they have regular mm-hmm. Sudoku and then they have chess Sudoku. So like the number nine is in a squ- in this certain square and it can't either go in like a king's move a queen's move or a uh the horse's move okay so it puts restrictions on where the numbers can go right you know and then there's killer sudoku where the uh there's these little boxes in dotted lines so if these three boxes are in one dotted line box and in the top left corner it has the number seven for example so in those three squares, it can only be one, two, and four. Because that's the only okay. numbers that equal seven, you know? Mm-hmm. So there's these little killer boxes, you know? There'll be a, a box of nine, but it's not just in a line. Mm-hmm. So obviously with, you know, the nine, it'd be 45. So it it restricts the numbers where they go. And then there's sandwich sudoku where there's numbers on the sides the tops the top and the the left it gives you a number and that's the uh total of the numbers in between the one and the nine so if on the side is a four so it could be one four nine or it could be one oh it can't be a anything else i was gonna use three and one but five, okay. for example, it could be one, five, nine, or it could be right. one, three, two, nine, you know, and then there's two other ones. I can't remember what Ther- thermometer Sudoku and aero Sudoku. Those have their own rules, too. So it's like there's so many and they each have like 100 puzzles. So I'll sit there and just rotate through all of them. And it's yeah. a lot of fun challenging my brain and seeing where I can see the little hints and stuff. Yeah, that was a lot of mumbling. Uh, that's that's what I've been playing. No, yeah, yeah. It it kind of reminds me like um like you mentioned like especially during the pandemic with all that stuff. My part I've been watching my partner recently. She's been playing a lot of um Wordle, which oh, you know, I, was like uh, I played the super crap big. Out of that. Yeah, it was like super big, and then the New York Times bought it, and they have it and like it in this plotted. app. Yeah, they have it in this app with a bunch of other stuff. But I forgot this like Wordscapes. I think is like the free app equivalent of that. And I've been like thinking of getting back into that because I was playing that for a little bit a long time ago. I'd hop in words, wordscapes to try to solve, try to find some words. You know what I'm saying? Expand my vocabulary. I feel like I have a decent vocabulary. Let's see if I really do. Right. And so right. Um, I was, that'd probably be a much more constructive mobile game to jump into than freaking Battle Z. Right. right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah that 100%. I can. Yeah, it's 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 nice to get into like those puzzle or like word puzzle games every now and then and just like kind of like, yeah, like just test the brain, you know? Yeah, it keeps it going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100 percent. Instead of rotten. Yeah. You got to I mean, you know. In this day and age, you, you got to keep the game, you got to keep the brain nim- nimble, nice and nimble, you know? Yeah. You add the games on top of it. <laughs> right. You, you, know, know. you don't want to smooth you don't want to smooth that brain out you don't you want to keep it nice and rigid nice Turn and tough into a freaking koala oh yeah and koalas are cute they're they're not though they are like, but they aren't it, it's it's crazy and they all have diseases i, I was gonna well, i was I was going to say, I think we can say it i was gonna say when well, you say they're not nice is it because of the is it because of their um um demeanor or their attitude or is it because of the syphilis okay yeah it's yeah they're 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 not friendly okay yeah they're not they're not friendly and also in addition to you have a raging yeah syphilis community they have they have have stis they got somebody's there's gotta be you know i'm hoping one day that the koala progressive movement gets there and someone comes up with some kind of a cure or clinic for these koalas to go to because and you got to get it figured out you, just, you can't just have a community of bear walking around just rampant with sti it's just right it's not, it's just it's, not a way to go you know what i'm saying no one no other bear community is, has this going on koalas got to get it together for real yeah all right enough of the 
koala bear syphilis tirade that I've gone on. It's now, <laughs> we're now How did we get here? Yeah, right. Uh, we're going to jump into the topics. Uh, and so I think we're going to start with uh, with the topic that, David, that you had. It's a pretty yes, interesting one. It is. Um, I don't know how to word it, but uh, things that stunt you from progressing in games. Like, why? That's that's the discussion. OK, so I yeah. ran into it recently in Pokemon Go. All right. They just released these Dynamax Pokemon and stuff like that. And you have to collect these Max particles in order to fight the Dynamax Pokemon. And you can only have a thousand at a time. And you can only collect so much per day. So. Why? You know, it's new, it's uh, invigorating, it makes you want to go and play the game again, mm-hmm. but then you're trapped. Like, I I have a Dynamax Pokestop, like, right at my house. I don't even have to get up to do one. I I can only do one a day, because the particles and, and crap like that, it's kind of, like, ridiculous. If you want to cap it, be a little more, I don't I don't know the word. But well, like, I guess a little more, I guess, like, it? yeah, make it that 3,000. Is, right. Be more generous with what you're given. You know? Yeah. 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 That's but I feel so trapped. Playing. Yeah. This. Yeah. That's a yeah, that's a great like you feel like you're yeah, you feel like you're tra- trapped is actually like a perfect word because it's not like it's not like it's not willing. Like you're like, I would I would like to progress and do more if yeah. if you would let me, but you're not allowing me to. Right. Like right. F- for the rating, you get two free passes a day. If you want to do more, you can you can buy more. That's uh, fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you can buy the particles, but the coin it caught is ridiculous. And mm-hmm. I haven't bought any. So I don't know if you can go past the thousand that you can store. Mm, yeah. You know, so it's it, it it's not the answer just to throw money at it, in my opinion. Right. Well, I mean, that's the answer they want you to arrive at. It sounds I like. won't. I and, ain't arriving there anytime soon. Yeah. Because that's like, and like, uh, like you kind of like mentioned like, hey, this thing. And I was like, hey, that sounds like a mobile game type of thing. And you were like, I was like, oh, yeah, it's right. Pokemon Go is a mobile game. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that is, yeah, that the is. most mobile. That is the thing. And I feel like in, in, in the realm of like mobile gaming, like that's why they do it. This is why we stunt growth, right? Or we or we stunt the the progression is so because, shady. yeah, is because we want you to pay to progress. So we're gonna cap how many jewels you get in a day from like free daily rewards or different things like that. But you can always buy nine hundred jewels for five dollars, and that's a deal yeah. because most of the time these nine hundred jewels cost seven dollars. But we're giving it on a sale for for five dollars, a sale that's perpetual because they actually have no value. Right. Yep. So. So, uh, yeah, for that, I mean, that that always sucks. That's always more times than not. That's the thing you, you talk about, like and like those other games I, I was playing, talking about playing. That's typically what happens is that you're playing it. You're having fun. You're, I mean, you're into it. We're talking an hour or two, maybe three hours in. You're playing it. You're booging. This is cool. This is cool. And then you hit that. You hit that cap. You hit that hard wall of, okay, this is yep. where you're going to start either drip feeding me prog- progress for no reason or the reason being is you want me to pay. And it's like, okay, well, this, this isn't, I don't want to do this no more. You know, you, you kind of like eject. You just hit the eject button yep. where, where it's like really come in, um, The worst to me, the worst use of things like that is in like mainstream single player video games. Because why? Why are you get out the way? You made the game. Just leave. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Um, It's like it's just just let me just let me have this thing. And right. I got talked about before, like like I know that I think it was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There was the big thing about level caps, like like certain missions you you can't access this mission if you're not level 34 or 30 or whatever it is or this one you need to be level 45 in order to access and it's like why like what like for what if i if i want to get mutilated let me get mutilated yeah let me get mutilated right well the thing that came to come out you know that that people are talking about is that they were also they had their store the ubisoft store 
right? Which, I mean, Ubisoft, for all we know, they might, they might be imploding right now. We don't know. But Ubisoft had the Ubisoft store. And guess what you could buy, David? Levels? Guess what you, guess what you could buy? You could buy XP booster packs. Oh, That's what my you could buy. God. So the thing is, it's like, hey, you, we're drip feeding you these XP. You have to have a certain level in order to access these missions. I mean, some of these missions, we got you just doing busy work. It's not that fun. Or we haven't really allowed you a lot of opportunities to raise up your XP. But we actually do have this opportunity. They're called XP booster packs. All you got to do is give us $9.99, right? And you can have 10,000, 15,000 XP. And that might boost you another level or two so you can unlock this mission and keep going, right? Like, it, it, it's when it's stuff like that happens, that's when you're really like, what are you doing? This is a yeah. single player game. I'm supposed to be in I'm supposed to be some kind of like Greek component in a story, some kind of Greek hero or something like that. Why are you selling me XP booster packs? What's going on here? This isn't a mobile game. This is a triple A single player game. And you're doing you're doing these caps and it, stuff. That's ridiculous. Those business tactics would not fly in Greece. They would not fly in Greece at all. Greece is very those very anti those types of practices, right? Um, and then you know you look at it and you're like, well, did that actually benefit you? Ubisoft really? It's it 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 looks like you're about to lose. You're, it looks like you're 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 about to fail as a company. It looks that That's way. Right. So it's, was, was it really fun. worth it? You know what I'm saying? Like, was it really worth it? Um, yeah, when stuff like that, that stuff is it's always the worst. And again, it's most prevalent in mobile games. And it feels like that's a game where you kind of like, you're like, I'm out of here. Um, I'm, I'm glad that it actually hasn't gotten into more single player games because that seems like it'd be ripe for. I'm, I'm surprised that EA or 2K hasn't jumped into utilizing that more and more and more. Um, yeah, they do other things. They get money. Call of Duty, I think, had it. They had like these xp coins and stuff that you oh uh, yeah 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 it's true yeah when they redid call of duty 4 yeah i was like this is stupid yeah it's obviously just a play on for for money it's just more money or it's another thing is like hey we don't really have a lot of content or we haven't balanced or, or paced the content well. So we're going to introduce these artificial caps and obstacles in order to slow the pace down so that this game that's probably a 20 hour game seems like a 35 hour game. Right. And, um, right. We don't have that much extra time. Right. I mean, that's, you're partially trying to beat, I believe to be the uh, very old thinking audience. That's like, if I'm paying, if I'm paying triple a prices for a triple a game, this game has got to last me at least 30, 40, it's got to be at least a 30, 40 hour game. And I'm like, why you want 30, 40 hours of, of like, of barely like, like I'd rather filler. have a filler, right? I'd, ha I'd rather have a very in like just impactful meaty 20 right. hour game. than one that's been drawn out for 40, 45 hours where you're like, all right, this is enough. Like this could have been, it's, it's, we talked before. It's the same thing with like movies, like movies are two and a half hours when they could just be under two hours. Like what is going on here? You know? And, and it's like that audience kind of, kind of pushes that kind of thinking still in a lot of developers. So like, we yeah. gotta make, we gotta make the game. It's a big game. It's gotta be so many hours. Um, and it's like, look, man, if it's going to be that long, either make, put all good content in there, put great, meaningful content in there, or just make the shorter game. Right. But don't yeah. do this weird thing where you're capping to space it out and pace it out and, you know, like messing up different things like that. It's already bad enough that we've got other things in games that are being blocked behind paywalls, whether they right. be like certain things we like, like 2K. I forgot, like. NBA 2K at one point, I don't know if they still do, but at one point they had either like a paywall lock or like an XP lock behind care cuts. Like if you want to give your player, your my 2K player a certain haircut, it was like, oh, no, you got to pay for it. It's like, what? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just it's already getting it's already I, stupid. I don't want to pay for my own haircut. I'm not going to buy someone else's haircut. You're I think kidding. about it. 
Think about you think about you're like, you know what? I just went to the barbershop and I did I just went to the barbershop. I paid 40 bucks for a haircut. I'm about to go pick up this new 2K because I'm feeling good about myself and I want to treat myself. I go and I pay $70 for the new 2K. I bring it back home to my system. I boot it up already. You know what I'm saying? I want to play my player online. So in order for me to play online on my PlayStation, I've already got to pay another $18 a month so I can play online. And then I log online and I'm like, I want to give my person the same cut that I got. And then in order for me to pay, get the same cut on my player that I have on myself. They're like, ah, oh, we need uh, you know, another five dollars equivalent in virtual currency. It's like, it's like, what is going on here? This is some kind of cruel joke that the universe is playing on us. Yeah. Where it's like had to pay for a haircut in real life and in a video game, you know? I can't. It can't. And it's like I forget how much I paid for Hellblade 2. Like 50 bucks, I think it was at. Mm -hmm. I I just checked. I played for 5.6 hours. Okay. I would go back and spend those 50 bucks again to play for 5.6 hours. Yeah. It was worth it. I don't need all this filler and whatever and stuff that doesn't matter. So it's a 25, 30 hour game. Mm hmm. This was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, but you also have like you have a realistic, understandable expectations for what that experience is going to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not just an arbitrary. Oh, it's got to be this long or it's got to be this. And like, my whole question is why? Like, like what's like, you know, why? If you're, yeah, OK, yeah, sure. I understand if you're paying $70 for a game and the game is three hours. OK, maybe. But also it depends. What is that game? Like, you know, right. Like, is it a is it a three hour augmented reality game where you're like where you get to walk around and actually like destroy a virtual environment as a mech? Right. And it's the most realistic thing you've ever experienced. It might be worth that seventy dollars then. Probably not. We're also talking about video games and this is me. <laughs> so probably not. Right. A lot of the games we're paying $70 for, they were $70 now. I would say no. probably not. Right. But it's just the idea of it has to be, there has to be a value there of more than just it's X many hours. Right. Um, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Especially if you're someone like me that where I, I actually value a game, if it's more efficient with its hours, if it can give me a great experience for less time, I'm actually bound to like it more than a game that gives me a pretty good experience for a longer amount of time, you know? Right. I mean, give me the six, give me the six to eight hours of Titanfall two any day of the week over even even a game I really like, like Final Fantasy 16 being 30 something hours. I'd rather take that six to eight hours of Titanfall two than that 35 hours of uh, a Final Fantasy 16, you know, same. It's yeah, but again. When you when you you talk about that, you talk about all the things that are there and then you put on top of it. Level caps progression caps it's like yep. man, you're just making it worse it's making it worse so yeah that's i i just the, the business tactics the video game industry has developed and follow and pursues and pushes and just it's upsetting mm -hmm. you're watching um greedy people with mbas take over and, and ruin a wonderfully creative and interesting, interesting industry. And they're, they're turning it into the movie industry. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon. I mean, it's already, you're already kind of seeing it in regards to like, there's now so many more remakes and remasters being done compared to what there used to be. And it's kind of the same thing in movies. Everything's either a remake or a remaster, or it's a game based or it's a movie or something based off an IP. So movies, we're making yeah, we're making yeah, movies right. off of video games now, and video games are oh, we're making games based off of either pre-existing older game IPs or possibly movies. It's like, man, come on, man. There's there's creativity out there. There is, and you know where it is? It's in these indie games. Mm -hmm. Freaking art, artful escape. Um, no, you know, uh, little nightmares. Mm -hmm. You know, all those kind of games. Yeah. Dark wildermyth Valley. wildermyth yeah yeah definitely uh, uh i think that's 
my topic? Do you have anything else? I don't. I don't. Um, we can move into mine because you did okay. mention you mentioned a game in there that kind of ties into my my topic. So, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. What, what do we got? So you mentioned the Artful Escape, which is a game that I know that you played and beat. Yes, um, loved it. Yeah, yeah. So that game was, I believe, developed and published by a studio named Annapurna. They're known for making these creative, interesting type of games. I think they're the I forgot what we said they were not the asylum, but maybe like whatever the art, the kind of arty equivalent of like a movie studio. That's kind of like Annapurna. So what's happened, though, is that recently there's been a kerfuffle. Uh, in regards to the executives there at Annapurna, the exact kerfuffle I don't want to get into because it's mostly kind of like just a lot of ego stuff. But the big news is that based on this kerfuffle and the decisions that are being made, um, the employees of Annapurna quit collectively. Unison. All right. They all quit. Um, and so Annapurna is effectively closed, temporarily, effectively closed closed for at least for the time being and so um that made me think because you know annapurna also hasn't done you know talk about the artful escape they also did stray which a lot of people liked and um and we're talking about um cocoon was another one that was i think developed by the lead developer who used to be at uh play dead which did like limbo and uh and inside and stuff like that so they've got some got really really cool interesting games under their belt and right. my hope is that they get the things figured out because I would I would genuinely not look forward to a studio like Annapurna closing. Again, they make interesting, unique games, and I think we need that, right? Yes, I agree. Um, so that had me thinking about developer closures. There's been other developers that have closed in the interim recently, as well as some of the you know the great ones of of, of long long ago. Mm-hmm. So. I want to posit a question to you because I have mine. I have both my 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 answer A and answer B. So my question to you is this. If you could resurrect one game studio, what game studio would that be? And if you could have them only work on one game, what is that one game you would have them work on? Now, the game doesn't necessarily have to be a game they developed before. But just what is that one? But it can be. And what is that one game you would have them work on? Okay. So I thought about it, looked a few things up, and (laughs) most of the games that I liked, those are still around. You know, like the first (laughs) thing, of course, the first thing I went to was Twisted Metal. Mm -hmm. It was Sony. So I went to uh, Too Much Stream, Sony. And, you know, they've been renamed, you know, this and that, like a 99 Studios and SCA. They keep switching the names every so often, but mm-hmm. they're still around. OK, so the one that I landed on that worked out. Boss Game Studios. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. I don't they, think so. They were founded in 94 and closed in 2002. Uh, the game that I played of theirs that I really liked was Spider, the video game. So you're this spider in this 2D, 3D world. Mm-hmm. And you walk around, you know, of course, there's these bad guys. You have to, like, kill and stuff. But you, your legs turn into, like, weapons. I remember one of them, you find a flamethrower. So one of your legs is a freaking flamethrower, right? So you, you eventually turn into this mechanical freaking robot spider or whatever and it was a really fun game so if they were to come back and either do like a a spider 2 or maybe something i guess updated you know like cyberpunkish you know take like a human and you know you find parts and whatever I, i i'm sure they could do a pretty good story or you know like the other games they did was top gear rally twisted edge extreme snowboarding boss rally top gear overdrive world driver championship and stunt racer 64 so okay. most mostly you know pretty straight and narrow kind of games mm-hmm. and you know that's most story games are so 
Uh, that's that's where I landed on. Yeah. That's where okay. I'm at. Okay. Okay. That would be the um. That w- yeah. That would be the studio and the game you'd have coming. You'd be it. You'd have them working on. Yes. What do you think? Would you think you would keep it in the? Just hypothetically, right? Would you keep it in the same? I guess the same genre, essentially, right? Like the same mechanics wise and 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 for, feel for the wise. Most part, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it, it would definitely have to be updated in some aspects to work in today's yeah. video game industry. But yeah, it was very simple. Uh, what are those called? I don't like like Mario and Sonic and I forget. Ah, yeah, yeah. The word is just not coming. To um, me. uh, platformer, right? Platformer, yeah. yeah. So it, it it gave off the platformer vibe. You know, you just walked around this level, got around the bad guys, or killed the bad guys, found these power ups. You know, that's that's what it was. So I it, those still do well nowadays. So that's, I would keep it around in the same genre. Okay. Cool, cool. What do, I like what do you got? Um so um if I could pick a studio that I would want to resurrect, um ah, so many options. I think the studio that I would resurrect would be um I'm trying to think in this climate. In this current climate, I think the studio that I would probably resurrect would be um, Visceral Games. What do they do? So Visceral did um, mostly known for like the original Dead Space one and two. Oh, it did okay. some of the PJ Core uh, tour ones. They were bought by EA. You know, they became EA. I think Redwood. I think was eventually or something like that. Um, and then of course it got closed down. Like EA does all the studios. You know. This role, Westwood, close them down. Um, yeah, they would. It would be them, and the game that I would have them uh, develop would be a game called uh, what is it called? Kingdom Under Fire Crusaders. Now, I think I might have talked about this game before. Kingdom Under Fire: The Crusaders is. Uh, it was developed by Fanagram. It was like a Korean developer um, for Xbox. It's an Xbox exclusive, actually. But it was basically like a tactical war game where you like command. You have your main like soldier hero that you control. And then you yeah. also control like your, your squad or army, your troop with them. Right. It was set in a fantasy. Rail, it was like a fantasy world, but it was like real kind of like gritty. You know what I'm saying? Like there's like. Yeah. You know, there's blood and there's elves and there's different stuff like that. And, you know, there's a long war and different things like that. It was such a cool and interesting game. Mechanically, it was really cool the way they did it. They eventually they had a, a third. That was the second game, I believe, in the series. They had a follow up called, I think, Circle of Doom, which ended it because I think when that came out, either not long after or at the same time, there was another game like kind of it seemed kind of similar called Ninety Nine Nights. And I think in Circle of Doom, they were moving a little bit more towards a Mushu than what the Crusaders was. And it's like, no, don't do that. We have Mushus. Don't do that. Dynasty Warriors exist. We have uh, Mushu. Right. Exactly don't do what Mushu. I was thinking. Yeah, don't do Mushu. And I think they 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 did that. And then 99 Nights also came out, and that was like a like a at least a European angled Mushu. And so um Kingdom Under Fire had like more of like you have commands for your troops in addition to you controlling your own person and you would like go in the war and you'd have a hundred a bunch of different things you could do. And it was just such a cool game, such a cool experience. And there was talk for a long time of them creating a fourth one or there being a fourth installment of the game that was being developed. Um, and it was going to be big and it was going to have dragons in it. You could command dragons and all this different stuff and the battles would be way bigger. And I don't think that game ever really came to fruition. They might have tested it because it was also going to be like a massive online game. And of course, you know me, I'm checking out. That's not my thing. And so I'm like, I don't want to do that. But 
if they could bring that, I would love to see that game brought back with that team because that team captured, you know, especially with the Dead Space games, they captured atmosphere so well. And to really kind of dig more into that world, I feel like you could get a real almost like Game of Thrones witchery type of atmosphere with the added element of like controlling a hero and then controlling armies and then having these different battles that break out. It would be super cool. And again, there's not a lot of games like it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's not a lot of games like it. So I think that would be the one that for sure that developer and then that game bring it back. You know, it would be awesome. Would love it. I yeah, that sounds good. I I because I I think it's new. Like I see, I've been seeing these ads of like Jon Snow endorsing this Game of Thrones game or whatever, and it's just one mm-hmm. of those. I like auto battle mobile games. And I'm like, yeah. that's, you know, if there was like a game that was like, you know, the game of Thrones and then I, you say Witcher, I'm like, yeah, there should be, be cool. I have like a Witcher game, but not like what the Witcher games are. Mm. Yeah. You know, that, that would be really cool. Yeah. And I, and I know that, I mean, I didn't look more into it because I also know that, um, oh man, what do they call it? I can't remember it. But um, the dev studio, you know, the ones that did Witcher and Cyberpunk. Oh, uh, CD Red? CD Red. CD Red. There we go. Wow. I never know these things. Pulled it out. Yeah. I know that CD Project Red announced that they were working on a Witcher 4. I don't know if the Witcher 4 is going to follow Geralt um, or if it's going to follow Siri because I didn't beat three. So I don't know how that story ends. Mm -hmm. Um, But it would be cool to examine... Like, I've been watching the show lately. It would be cool to examine that world outside the perspective of just Geralt because that world is so big and there's so many players in it. Um, so, yeah, that would be cool. But kind of adding that element to it as well. But just give me kind of the atmosphere and the mood of it a little bit, but a little bit of that darker mood. You know, I kind of feel like, you know, like, I don't know, man. It, I kind of feel like like Remedy a little bit. Like, I always talk about Remedy. Like, I love their their approach to like storytelling and games and how they do that, all that stuff. And I feel like, you know, visceral could do that type of work and, you know, having it with that kind of IP. I mean, Hey, it's an old IP, so it should fit. Everyone's either remaking or whatever. It's not a brand new IP. So right. maybe someone's holiday, you know, can look at it. It's right in there. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, they, if they came out with, I swooped. I just freaking swooped that up. But to be honest with you, if they had not, they were doing a remaster of it, of that game. I freaking all right ordered. Let's go. That's <laughs> like I'm not, I haven't got to think about it. You know. Yeah. That's. I don't even know what I was gonna say. I just blanked out. Well, yeah, that's that's my that's my studio and game. Okay, it's a good choice. Thank you, thank you. I I did. It was it was hard. I did have. As another possible option, I was going to go very, very easy, very straight down the line. I was going to do give me Lionhead Studios and give me the movies. Like, because I love that, right? Um, there is, but there is another game. There, There is a movie studio game out. It's an indie one called Blockbuster Inc. It's not as good as the movies at all. In fact, I don't even think so. One of the one of the great appeals of the movies, just sidebar. One of the great appeals is that after they after your Sims, I guess, film the movie, you can actually watch it. Oh, um, and Blockbuster Inc. doesn't have that. So, Got you it. know, and yeah. I remember there were some people that if you logged on like forums and stuff like this back in the day. So 2001, 2002, if you went online And if your, you know, dial up could handle it. Children out there or young people, your (laughs) dial up can handle it. Your 56 K could handle it. Nobody was on the phone that day. Oh, yeah. Uh, You could go online to these forums and you could see these movies that people uploaded from there. The movies gameplay because you can compile them. And like me, I never I never I only got so far in regards to like time wise because it starts in like the 20s or 30s and goes all the way to modern present day but i remember seeing some where people were making like these action movies and they were like 60 70 minutes long 60 70 minute movies wow. that they made within this game 
and they'd have some they they created a sim that looked like Bruce Willis and they'd have him up there like running and shooting a gun and jumping and stuff and it's like <laughs> this is this is cool it's cool it's ridiculous but it's cool right yeah that sounds really cool it, it yeah my 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 theory is though is that we are maybe more and li- more likely to be able to get access to play the um to play the movies in some way shape or form that Microsoft may okay it for us to be able to access and play the movies before we ever get a, a Kingdom Under Fire, Crusaders, anything. So that's why I'm picking that game more. So. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah. All right. That, that's I think it for mine. Yeah. All righty. Well, that brings us near the end of the podcast, which means it's time for final thoughts. We can offer a final thought about anything related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, who would like to give their final thoughts first? I'll go. Okay. All right. So, the other day, it's like a week ago, uh, I was out thrifting with my partner. And I laid eyes on these, like, pumpkin orange corduroy pants. Okay. Okay. Now, I love corduroy personally. Yeah. Always been a big fan, but I haven't had corduroy anything since like junior high school. Mm-hmm. I used to have corduroy pants. I, I loved them. I wore them as, as soon as laundry was done. That's what I was mm-hmm. wearing the next day. Yeah. You know, so fortunately, these pumpkin orange corduroy pants were my size. Oh, yeah? So, like, now it started a chain reaction. We went thrifting the next day. I found, like, a fire hydrant red corduroy pants that were my size. So, like, I'm on the mission to get all these obnoxious colors mm-hmm. of corduroy mm-hmm. pants. Yeah. And at least, you know, that I have a, a shirt color with or whatever, you know. So, I just want, like, a bright yellow pair and, like, a bright blue pair and just, like, a black pair. And just I just want to have, like... The rainbow mm. of corduroy pants. Of corduroy pants. That's the mission I'm on. And the best part is it's off thrifting. So the most I've spent on a pair was like five bucks. Yeah. That's um well that also seems it seems to be a highly probable place of where you would find corduroy. Is going to yeah, be I don't thrifting. even know if it's even being made anymore, you know? That's like a uh, late 90s early 2000s thing yes 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 <laughs> this is yeah this this is another uh you know uh, the, I, w- I would say as another markings of your odd duckiness is yeah, your definitely is your, your quarter rice i used to have um a not lime i would say almost <sighs> for lack of a better word kind of a diarrhea greenish pair of corduroy pants when i was younger um i i i hate corduroy with a passion so it's, <laughs> it's very yeah, it's so, definitely it's, not everybody's taste it is not it it's, is not yeah oh some people I, hate it just like you yes, said yes but I, what I, I what i can do is appreciate appreciate the fact that you absolutely love them i love nothing more than to see some see someone else have complete passion and love for something that I have the complete opposite of. I think it's so cool. It's just you're just seeing the world like in, it's like the world flips inside out for just a moment, and you're like, "What?" Mm-hmm. Um, so your plan is. I also like that you that you contextualized it by saying that you're going to seek the most obnoxious colored corduroy pants, oh, which yeah. I think which I think is 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 a feat, not for the weak of heart. And I also think it's. You're also like, hey, not only am I, not only do I love a a texture of material that most people hate, I'm going to make sure I acquire them in the loudest of colors. <laughs> yes, because I have a I have a bright orange hoodie uh-huh. as well. So I was wearing the pants with the hoodie, and then ugh, I have this Charizard hat. So this is what color it is. It's right? that color. So I was wearing this beanie. Wearing the hoodie, wearing the pants, walking around everywhere. That's what I was thrifting in the next day. Um, Love it. Love it. W- was there was there a good draw of attention? Did you, draw, did you draw a good bit of attention? Nobody said anything to me. 
Nobody said anything. But but maybe. You know how a lot of people are. But like, look at that guy as they're yeah. walking by, you know? Yeah. So I, I might have. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I would, yeah, you know what? I mean, hey, like you said, the cool thing is you're finding them, like, going thrifting, and they're, it's, it's not breaking the bank. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to, you're going to, is your plan is to have a whole, which it sounds like you said you have an orange and a red, right? Yeah, and I have a, a like, a regular color, like, not a jeans blue, but, like, a, 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 a darker regular pants blue pair as well that I found okay. with the orange pair. So have you began curving out, carving out wherever in the closet, a space that is just corduroy? Not yet. Okay. But when my friend moves out mm-hmm. in 10 days, supposedly we'll see. She's going to have her own room and she's going to have her own dressers because she's, we just been sharing a dresser and stuff yeah. for the past three years. So when she has all of her own space and her own closet, then I'll have the room to be like, this is the corduroy section. It's a corduroy section. I like it. I like CIP it. CIP only. <laughs> CIP. What, what is yeah. that? What is that? Uh, whatever VIP is, except it's corduroy. Except it's a corduroy. So, well, VIP would be a very important person. Very. Okay. Well, VIC. So it's a VIC. It could, very well, important was, corduroy. Very important corduroy. I was going to say, um, I was gonna, you could do CIP if you wanted to do corduroy important pant. You could maybe do, Ooh, yeah, maybe do something like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, a, a certain section. You know what? If you're I going to do get, ICP, important corduroy pants. You could do ICP, and you know what? And you have yeah, and then on whatever, whatever the end hanger is, you just have a face. Of one of the one of ICP, you just have the face <laughs> that's just there, and that marks the end of the ICP section. Everyone knows where it ends. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. That that's that's my final thought. It's a very good. It's a very good final thought. Um, my final thought is um, that Frostpunk Two came out to I believe pretty good reviews and uh one of the reviews said that uh hey i believe that frostpunk 2 kind of marks the kind of marks that the game pass for pc is as good as the as the game pass for console and that made me consider i've talked before about i'm probably going to end up giving up game pass and now i'm curving more and I'm, i'm leaning more towards i may just give up ultimate game pass and i may keep pc game pass because um yeah, you know start there and see how it works for you yeah i care less about day one stuff on pc because i already have so many other games on pc that i play anyway um and so it might end up working for me i don't lose the manor lords i don't really lose the Frostpunk 2 i think microsoft cares less about day one stuff on pc compared to the console um so i think that might be the best compromise there um so yeah that's that's my final thought all right yeah that's uh that's good like you said if you're not worried about the day ones you'll have it eventually you don't mm-hmm. have to drop you know the 60 70 bucks at once yeah I and mean, especially you know like i've been playing rome expeditions or expeditions rome they had one they made before called expeditions vikings i might jump into that you know what i'm saying then that's another two months that I'm playing one thing and I ain't got to worry about whatever new is happening. The yep. new games will be old by the time I come around to them. They're just the way you like them. Yep. And then you end up forgetting about them, even if they release new DLC. Talking to you, Starfield. <laughs> Talking to you. Oh, uh, uh, that's hilarious. But I guess that brings us to the end of level 118 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you liked what you heard, like, follow, subscribe to the podcast on your preferred platforms. Okay, we're on the platforms, like I just said. Also, we are on the socials. Facebook, X slash Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and then, of course, YouTube, where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. If you want to support us, there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, one, you can buy merch at our Teespring store. We have phone cases, T-shirts, hats, 
all the things are great uh, also we have a patreon three tiers two five seven dollar tiers um where you can check out little bits of goodies there exclusive content that goes there before it goes up on youtube um yeah i think that's pretty much it for me did you have any david did you have anything else you want to add please all righty well thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next level